What's up, Ozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to part two of the Game Theory timeline. I am so excited to see what MatPat has in store this time. Now, last time we reacted to part one, and I actually quite liked it. I, I thought it was, um, I, like, the community really th thought it was, like, a lot of speculation, and that's, like, the main contention point of it. Hopefully this one is going to be different because it's actually talking about the contents of the games rather than what comes beforehand. But, um, yeah, I am a FNAF theorist. Well, technically, um, I'm not, like, mega into the lore, but uh, I do like the lore of the games, so I tend to indulge <laughs> from time to time um, and so we're going to be reacting to the second part FNAF The Rise of Afton so it's gonna be talking about the middle part of the timeline and I'm quite scared I feel like if any of these three videos or four technically if any of these four videos uh, are to be most feared it's this one because this one um, is talking about the main kind of original games, I, I guess, and then next time we're going to be talking about VR and Security Breach and AR. Um, and so, I am scared. It is 27 minutes long, so this is going to be a long video. This is going to be a long video. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I literally, it, it literally just uploaded like two seconds ago, so, or two minutes ago. Um, let's be realistic. So, I'm ready to get into this. Fingers crossed. Let's hope Matt Pat doesn't get killed. Let's go. Hello, Internet. Welcome, Welcome to, to Game, Game Theory. Theory. And officially page seven of the FNAF timeline script. Last seven. time we covered okay. the origins of Freddy's. We talked about William Afton's childhood dream project mm -hmm. of making a singing bear come to life and the infuriating moment it's that his bad. dream is copied by a rival restaurant franchise looking to steal away his success. The merger yeah. of the two franchises results in William meeting Henry, a brilliant designer with a knack for robotics. Working together, they make Fred Bears flourish, spawning popular Saturday morning cartoon shows, toy lines, and spin off restaurants under the Fazbear name. When last we left him, Afton was thriving. The world mm -hmm. of robotics opening his eyes to new and I'm not sure about the mediocre melodies thing, but life. maybe he'll life. elaborate yeah, a little bit that more. That was his core driving force, his passion. And it was this very passion that would mutate, twist, and morph from here on out in the story. Yeah. Because with life, there is inevitably death something that Afton would become intimately familiar with. But before yep. Afton acquaints himself with death, I want you to take some time to acquaint yourself with our newest channel. Ooh. Guys, this is a huge moment for us theorists. For the last decade, FNAF we have no, four-player <laughs> controller icon, and now we finally fill in the final missing piece. Get ready for the rollout of our newest theorist channel. Drum roll, please. Wait. Style theory, where we're looking at the science, math, psychology, history, and mystery. Interesting. Of the way you look, your clothing, <laughs> fashion trends, hygiene, I, and makeup. No, I know the that theorizing boot. about style might sound weird at first, but hear me out. I grew up not understanding style or fashion at all. Admittedly, I was a bit of a hot mess, blissfully ignorant to the impact <laughs> that style has over your life and how the world treats you. But over time, by educating myself on the ins and outs of the fashion industry, I was better able to achieve my true self and find my own sense of personal style. Hey, fair enough. That's, it's pretty good, pretty good going. I did not think he was going to reveal that in this video. That's pretty cool. That's a pretty big reveal in a FNAF video as well. Um, so yeah, that's, that's good for you, Matt Pat. Good for you. Filling in the fourth of, uh, of, of the, yeah. Style and that right there that builds confidence. The exactly, way that you look directly exactly. affects the way that you feel and the way that other people try. I like to think I've got so a bit of style. Understanding those rules and being know. able to take some control over all of that is incredibly valuable. It's an educational curve. And what do we do on these channels? We like to educate you while entertaining you, which honestly is it does why make sense. This channel is so does make important sense. for us to launch. There are so many lies and half truths in the fashion industry that there needs to be someone out there to say, hey, this is right, this is wrong, and this is what science says. Also. Yeah. So, you know, we're gonna have a lot of fun because talking about fashion is weird. Like, this channel has already given me the excuse to bludgeon a ballistic head to death using a high heel. It's also the channel where we're gonna physically be talking oh. about the viability of female armor or how uh, many times oh. it takes to stop a bullet. There's also uh. a lot of everyday stuff too on this channel. Okay. Do school uniforms actually I'll be watching. The students? I'll Does be it watching. make a difference whether or not you wash your legs in the shower? That's the sort of stuff that you can find on this new channel. In fact, there are five new episodes that you can check out right after you finish this beast. Wow. I personally five. recommend starting with the killer heel episode because this episode's all about the birth of a killer. And while you're <laughs> over there, consider subscribing. It'll do okay. 
okay. all of us over here I a will. huge favor. I will. Because if we manage to get a million subscribers by the end of the month, it'll put us as a top fashion channel here on YouTube. Show the world that looking smart can be even better than looking cool. So go ahead, enjoy your all-day nice theory one, Matt, Pat. marathon. And, and now the with our logo team. complete, it's time to complete our other massive ongoing project, this timeline. Onward to part two, where things are about to get dark in a hurry. Okay. 1983, business was booming with yep. two whole restaurant franchises running. Fred Bear's Fred Family Diner and, and the newly opened Freddy Fazbear's yep. Pizza. Together, William and Henry had been able to take the hybrid suit idea and make it into a reality. They called their new invention the, the spring, spring lock, lock suit. suit. And right. fittingly enough, it was symbolic of the partnership between these two men. A human suit as designed by William that could become a freestanding Henry-style robot. But because it was Good still point. tech Good with point. to work out, the rollout was limited. Restricted only to the Fred Bear's Family Diner location. All of this meant that William was busier than ever. He didn't have time to be a full-time parent, so he designed a nanny cam system where cameras and speakers were hidden throughout the neighborhood, as well as in his youngest son's favorite toy, psychic friend Fredbear. I mean, plushy Fredbear. He's here, but he's since left. cameras just weren't enough to raise a kid, he also left childcare duties to his eldest son, Michael. There was just one problem with that. Michael was far from the best babysitter. He tormented his younger brother by jump-scaring him with a foxy mask and constantly So wait, wait, home. wait, wait. I'm sorry to, because I'm going to pause quite a lot because obviously I do want to talk about a lot of the points he brings up, uh, which is probably why this video is like twice as long as the original video. I'm sorry about that. Um, but like, what was, I don't get why, what, what's his point on the cameras? Like, I don't get why, is he just looking, I don't know. It, just to keep his child safe? Like, I don't know if that's viable. I don't know. I feel like there's a bigger law drop there or, or like he's missed the point or something because like, I guess you could say FNAF 4 experiment rooms kind of tie into it because it's like experimenting on the crying child and using illusion discs and stuff like that. I feel like that's more the point of the cameras than just like, oh, I need to watch my child while I work at Fredbear's. I don't know if that's a good way to put it, but I don't know. We'll see. William watched all of it from his cameras. Kids would be kids. Tomorrow was another day, after all. Except Michael's mm -hmm. torment didn't stop. Bitter, angry thoughts would run through Michael's mind. Why did he have to be the one to take care of this whining crybaby all the time? It just wasn't fair. It was time that he got even with his brother by playing the ultimate prank. A prank that I just guess that ties into a fast of crying child's birthday. He and his friends would take his scared little brother and make <clears> him do the one thing that he was terrified of doing. Getting close to the animatronics. That would be embarrassing for the kid that was such an embarrassment to him. Okay, his brother squirmed, screamed, kicked, and fought. What but did just he as see? they were putting that small squirming boy up to Fred Bear's lips, the mouth snapped shut. The sensitive spring locks inside the body had been triggered by the boy's movements, and they'd immediately clamped down. The wriggling stopped. The boy uh, limp, but it was just a prank. Triggered by the tears, fun. I would the say. The boy was taken to the hospital and was immediately Moisture. given an IV. Flowers and pills filled the nightstand next to his hospital bed, but the yep. damage was too severe. He couldn't recover. As He's the younger brother's consciousness began to fade, he could hear Michael's last words, a small and flimsy apology. But his father, Williams, through the voice of the Fredbear plush, were a firm and committed promise to a dying son. You're broken. I will put, put you, you back, back together. together. This would not be the end. No matter what, Williams' But the text son, color change. Again. It would just take time. <laughs> <laughs> that right now he just didn't have. His young son's heart flatlined as the boy faded into the inky unknown of the afterlife. In the aftermath of the tragedy, changes started happening around the restaurants. Kids were now required to wear security wristbands to prevent anyone from getting outside without parental permission. Any kid who approached the exit without permission would have to answer to the security puppet, a marionette on strings that could fly around on huh. rails across the restaurant to stop kids in their tracks. It was William's idea, inspired by Michael constantly leaving the restaurant without his brother. You're saying the security puppet was William's idea? Um... That's a hard one. That's, I, I don't, I'm not sure about that. It's, it's hard to judge, right? It, it, because I feel like the puppet with like Charlotte being Henry's daughter is more related to, to Henry than William. But at the same time, I guess there would be, hmm, that, that's, that's a hard one. I feel like, I think it, it probably was Henry that made the security puppet, but I don't know. I don't know. I, Hmm. He'll probably elaborate on it later. 
in the wake of Fredbear's spring lock failure, I might be missing something. Suits were getting retired, locked away at the nearby Freddy Fazbear location. It was yet another tough pill to swallow after all the hard work that he and Henry had put into them. William would eventually bury the boy's small body in a remote location out in the woods right alongside his drive into and out of work every day. The death of this little boy sent the family spiraling. His wife, crippled with grief, That's a mound was so of distraught dirt. that it all says she could do was sit and watch TV. But his son, Michael, guide. was far worse. Complaining of seeing hallucinations of a golden bear standing outside of his window, the boy was so racked with guilt that he was convinced that he was being haunted by the ghost of his brother stuck inside the suit that took his life. The suit's three-toed feet digging into the wet earth, the words, it's me, ringing through Michael's ears. Some nights, Michael would even go so far as to break out of his room to check the gravesite and ensure that his oh, brother I don't know was about still that. there. As for William himself, he disappeared into his work and his drinks. No, Junior's because... The local bar wasn't far Sorry to keep pausing. You're, you guys are all gonna kill me in the comments. No, because Michael is the the one sitting in the chair watching TV, right? Because then that parallels this location, I feel like. And it's got the same text color, I think. Might, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I, I think it's a bit of a stretch to say Michael was the one that ran off to that place again. Because who would be the person sat in the chair? Mrs. Afton? I feel like Mrs. Afton probably left after the bite. It's a tricky one. It's a it's a tricky one. Um, again, Midnight Motorist is still like the biggest puzzle piece that hasn't been fully solved because there's just so much in there that contradicts other things. Uh, and the other thing is that surely that's after Charlotte's death, right? Because of later that night. So. I mean, okay, he's probably going to bring that up in a second. ...from his son's gravesite. He found I'm... himself going there more and more frequently, spending oh, longer drinking. and longer amounts of time there. Oh, the bar okay. gave him a place to think, to remember, to reflect and stew on how Henry had stolen his idea for an animal-themed restaurant. How they'd cut his character out of the cartoon when everyone else and was so there. And so he killed Henry Henry's had daughter? humiliated him by buying him out of bankruptcy. And now... Now there was his son. Henry had taken his son from him robotic part was the part that failed after all. William ordered one more drink but Good point. one too many. The bar turned him out and told him to go home. But William didn't go home. Drunk and angry William raced back to the restaurant to give Henry a piece of his mind. Only to find someone else waiting. Henry's daughter Charlie locked outside of the building bullies laughing at her through the window I think that's a good motivation. Some other problem to fix. But then Afton got an idea a beautifully awful idea this. This was his chance to get that's back the at the that humiliated him all those years ago. Henry had killed his business, and now Henry's robotic suit had killed his son. It was time for William to do some killing of his own. Let Henry feel what it's like to have something you love get ripped away. While parties continued inside the walls of the pizzeria, William attacked Charlie in the back alley. It felt good. He felt free. The okay. years of resentment and bitterness trapped in his heart finally released in a moment of pure unapologetic evil. Yeah. He would make Henry hurt like... Uh, sorry, I... I... Uh, uh, um, uh, yeah, I know, I like that motivation, or it's not like one motivation at all, it's not like Henry did a big thing and then w that caused William to do a big thing. It was build up over time, it started very early and Henry kept doing things that annoyed William and it stacked up and up until William's son died. Uh, he said, I will put you back together to the crying child because uh, he clearly loved him as a child and um, and so that kind of sprung him into this drunk father figure uh, that would then go out and kill Charlotte. I think that's a pretty good motivation. I would say uh, drinking is a good coping... No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Drinking is not a good coping mechanism, first of all. It's a good... It's like a good... How do... I can't... <laughs> I can't... Um, say words. It's a good thing that he he pointed that out. I, I feel like he was going to like base a lot of the motivation on the drinking, but no, he's saying that like the crying child died and that is what caused the drinking and that is somewhat what caused the death of Charlotte. I like that rather than just he was a drink driver, you know? Um, yeah, I, I, I think that's okay. Like he hurts! <laughs>
And in that moment, William became a killer. He dropped Charlie's lifeless body and drove home, forced to confront his family problems later that night, appalled, but also a little excited by what he had just done. Charlie's death would remain on the books as a random act of violence. And though Henry had suspicions about William, there was no physical evidence, nothing that could link him back to the crime. In the weeks that followed, Fred Bear's True. family diner would close for good. Two high-profile deaths around the restaurant with two grieving owners in such a short period of time, mm -hmm. just too much bad press to handle. That Besides, is a good Fred point. Fazbear's Charlotte was still did open, die outside Fred Bear's. restaurant anyway. All the equipment from the diner, including the old yellow suits and security puppet, would get retired to that location. And there they would sit for two uneventful okay. years. The rest of... Okay, I'm sorry to pause again. Oh, yeah. Um... Only problem with this, only problem with, well, there's probably multiple problems with this, but a big problem with this I'm seeing is, of course, where does William live? He either ne lives next to Fred Bears, which he probably does because we see the crying child living in that house in FNAF 4, or he lives in the Midnight Motorist house, which is miles away from, um, from Fred Bears. So that is a big issue to me. Um... And it's been a big issue for a while, honestly. Like, we, I, nobody's ever solved that. <laughs> Why are there two very different houses? Um, of course, the FNAF 4 title screen also shows that Midnight Motorist house um, with the nightmares in, like, a pile in the front. But it still doesn't really connect to the FNAF 4 minigames unless that is... Because it's, like, 8-bit... It could be just an 8-bit representation, so it's not perfectly accurate. I actually like that a lot. I actually like that. Uh, that, you know, it's 8-bit. Uh, it's like a video game. You're, like, you're playing a video game like Fruity Maze. Or like, uh, well, like Midnight Motorist as well. Like, there's different interpretations based on what the kind of media show... What, what the media is that shows it. You know what I mean? Um... Yeah, that was really hard to describe, but hopefully I got that point across. <laughs> 1983 and 1984 were spent quietly grieving. Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and the new cast of characters were a hit. Tragic memories of their yellow predecessors... So what's the motivation for killing Aston other children, profile then? ...and buried himself in work and research, quickly reaching Henry's level of engineering and even surpassing him. And while Henry slowed down to grieve, Afton kept going. Even starting his own Sister company, location. Afton Robotics, for all those pet products okay. that were a little bit I see where he's going with this. ...for the regular operations of the pizzeria. The first of these experimental projects was a secret workshop under his house. A veritable bunk which allowed him to work while still monitoring his kids via hidden security cameras. But One, why? Nine, no. Eight, three. A passcode that served as a constant reminder of why the cameras were so important. Why he was down there in the first place. This was all uh... to fulfill the promise that he had made to his son, right? I will put you back together. This was for him. All for him right? But cameras weren't enough. He needed to solve the runaway Michael problem. He had to keep him in the house. He couldn't have another one of his kids wind up dead inside of an animatronic suit. So why not run a little experiment on Michael? You see, all this work with he Henry got him to start learning more about life, robots, the human mind, and what a fallible machine we as humans were. Our reality is so easy to manipulate with a few sensory deceptions. Deceptions like sound. With just a few sounds, he had discovered that he could alter sound delusion vision. Discs. He could transform blanks smooth plastic robots into lumbering twisted nightmares. Nightmares far scarier than he could create with actual materials. Right, they would yeah. appear organic, rotting, putrid, terrifying. These would be his means of keeping his son Michael in the house where he belonged. Was it extreme? Maybe. But then again, this was the boy who had killed his son. He would make him sorry. And so Michael would grow up not only dealing with the mm. memories of his own guilt, the hospital room, the pills, the flowers, the death of his brother, but also facing literal nightmares. Illusions created by sound. Michael would never forget these either. Years later, as a security guard, he would still draw pictures of them inside of his logbook. But all of these yeah. extra projects meant that his home life suffered even more. He was an absent father and a non-existent husband, leaving his wife cold and alone. Why do you hide inside your walls when, when there is music in my halls? All I see is an empty room. No more joy on him. That's still so creepy to this day. And despite her repeated demands that he leave his office and engage with the family, he refused time and time again, leaving her no choice but to leave. You burned down my house? You call that a house? It was like a morgue in there. You need to see your son. The baby isn't mine. Well, how's this? 
I'm keeping the diamond ring. And through it all, there was one lingering feeling. William wasn't done. He had gotten a taste of what it felt like to be unleashed. What it felt like to be free. Charlie's murder had unlocked something in him. And he wanted more. June 26th, 1985. Putting on the golden bonnie suit, he oh. loved children one by one. Wait a to second. The, of the pizzeria when no one Wait was a second. At Where sucks baby's cautious. entertainment rentals? I mean, pizza world. Cake and cookies. He told them that their dog had died. He would ask for help with homework. Susie was the first. Yeah. You never truly forget get your first. I have seen everything. But where to hide the bodies? He couldn't sneak out. Someone would see him. He had to hide them in a place where they'd never be in found and where suits. they'd never leave the building. They had to be stuffed. Stuffed inside of the suits. No one maintained those things anyway except for him. And so Susie would go into Chica. Fritz, Jeremy, and Gabriel would come next. But it was easy. It was too easy. And with each little life he snuffed out, his lies got bigger. Their house was burning. They're just being killed kidnapped until the last one where all pretense was off. He let himself get violent. Too violent. I'll just wait for him after school. Throw a bag over his head. Hit him with a shovel and drag him into the back of my car. <laughs> yeah. The body of Cassidy was far more <laughs> bloody and broken than any of the others. He'd let himself okay. go too far. That one, that one he should. I quite like that. With no more I active like animatronics left, he shoved the body into the one no Andrew in sight. backstage. Thank God. <laughs> long forgotten yellow Fred bear. Now broken and discolored with age. Broken like Cassidy was broken. Like his son was broken. Newspapers reported on this disappearance, okay. naming the whole thing the missing children's incident. Police yeah. would even charge William with the crimes after finding security footage of the golden mascot suit luring kids to the back, but they couldn't convict him. They had no bodies, and his face had been hidden behind the mascot mm -hmm. suit the entire time. What they had was circumstantial at best, and so he walked away a free man. But Henry knew the truth. In these murders, he saw his right. daughter Charlie all over again. Henry so he definitely threw Afton out of the company and shuttered the doors to the old pizzeria. Henry would keep the franchise quiet for two years. This would not happen again. This could not happen again. How could he protect the kids? Finally, he developed a solution. He would implement an even more extreme security system in the form okay. of new animatronics. Toy animatronics. Inspired by the toys that they had been selling years ago. But these guys, these were special. They were a new breed of robot facial, facial recognition. recognition abilities. But most importantly, to recognize no William Afton. I like that. I like that. Right. All the original animatronics, nice. now withered with age, were moved to the new location. With right. the plan in place, it was time to try once more. Rebrand. The year was 1987, and the new and improved Freddy Fazbear's Pizza was making headlines in local newspapers. Headlines that just so happened to catch the attention of William Afton. Freddy's was back? And without him? That was his idea. His character. Henry was, yet again, trying to cut him out of the picture. No. As long as these restaurants stayed open, William would always come back. Then he noticed the <laughs> number to apply at the bottom See what of the you article. did Hundred dollars a week to apply call. Afton would go back, not as an owner or co-founder. He would go back in the one place that they would least suspect him. A lowly day shift security guard. And there it was. Buried in the back of parts and services mixed um, in with the old withered animatronics was the golden rabbit. With the yellow security badge still on his chest, he used his crank to oh. pull open the spring locks. It was time for Bonnie to give an honor. I thought he was saying he was the oh, night guard in FNAF 2. <laughs> Uh, I was about to say. I like this. I like this. Five more, more kids. kids. He didn't know what felt better. Getting back into the suit after two long years of waiting, or knowing how devastating this would be to Henry the next morning. He didn't I'm even try those to the save them, kids. This time. Just right. meant more blood on Henry's hands. He'd failed to protect the kids again. The restaurant had only been open for a few weeks, but William was sure that this would get it to close. Good. If he couldn't have Freddy's, no one would. Whenever a new pizzeria opened, he would be there. But as he sat in his bunker, something else started to linger in William's mind. He had seen something strange. The old withered animatronics, they had been wandering around the building, spurred on by the puppet. It was almost like those old robots were trying to save the kids. Save them? They couldn't, obviously, but still, how were they moving? It was almost like they had been given life somehow. Did he have something to do with that? The following day, the news would report a security guard getting bitten by one of the I animatronics. I really like the narrative he's bringing up here. For 
for him? William's curiosity. I've seen plenty of timelines with he just had no more, story. But how? There was no way he'd ever be able to get inside another Freddy's pizzeria. Heck, there was practically no way a Freddy's would ever open again. He needed huh. to create something new, something brand new. He needed to create his own pizzeria. Due to the massive success hmm. and even more so the unfortunate closing of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, it was clear that the stage was set. No pun intended for another contender in children's entertainment. Okay. Circus Baby's Pizza World. This. So this then Henry and William are battling again. Work. No longer just murdering, experimenting. He needed more kids, and he needed them alive. And knowing that he couldn't show his face on the restaurant floor, he needed a way of remotely capturing his victims and preserving them for his work. With that goal in mind, he I designed see. a new breed of animatronic. Their endoskeletons fluid and flexible. He equipped them with sound lures that could mimic voices. They could isolate children. They could incapacitate and Contain them with zero and they would have sound illusion discs. It was brilliant. He he's was brilliant. With them. Far beyond the simple bars and wires of Henry's designs. And the characters he chose for this were uniquely his. His new roster wasn't going to be tainted by Henry's disgusting barnyard bird. Instead, it was back to his characters, his creations. Freddy, Bonnie, Foxy. As well as two special ones. The first, Ballora, was an homage to the woman who left him. Now, she would never leave him again. The second, the titular baby oh was my designed God. with his baby in mind. Elizabeth, his youngest child. She would always be daddy's little girl. The one that listened to him. The one that obeyed. Then I need an explanation the for the mangling daddy, sister's room. Why won't you let me play with her? Because that's still something so big. pretty and shiny. Didn't you make her just for me? <sighs> The day before a Circus Baby's Pizza World opened, she disobeyed. She didn't mm -hmm. listen. Left alone with Baby, she got too close. The animatronic ripped in half and swallowed her whole. A scared and confused child fading into eternal darkness. By the time Afton found her, it was too late. She was gone. He immediately canceled the launch of Circus Babies under the guise of a gas leak. But wait, as he sat there at the foot of the stage, he noticed that something was different. The eye color of the robot <laughs> changed. changed. Baby yeah. had been built with blue eyes, but now they were emerald green, the same color as Elizabeth's. Was she in there? Could this all be connected to the free-moving animatronics that he had seen at Freddy's? He had to know more. His mourning turned to excitement. He had to return to where it all started. 1993. Pathetic. This place was pathetic. Henry had clearly tried to reopen one final time with those old original animatronics from so long ago. Ago, but William's damage to the brand had been permanent. These things. He didn't talk about the bites of 83. Oh, decades. seven, sorry. But even if they had, nothing could wash away the stink of murder that haunted these halls. One night, then another, then another. William repeatedly snuck into the old, broken restaurant to lure the living animatronics to him, one by one dismantling them, robbing them of their endoskeletons. The metal had to be the secret. It had to contain the remnants of life itself. But mm -hmm. he had to know for sure. Leaping out of a room that was invisible to the animatronics programming, he dragged the oversized robotic skeletons back to his underground workshop. Back to where Circus Baby watched on with glowing curious eyes. Eyes that somehow felt alive. Not knowing what else to do, William melted the robotic parts down. Five animatronic endoskeletons reduced down to one silvery puddle of goo. Could he transfer this living metal to his own creations? He had to try. He picked up a syringe and filled it with the molten metal and injected molten the MCI. to into Freddy's twisted wiry endoskeleton. And suddenly the coils came to life. Like snake writhing in a pile, what had once been cold, lifeless metal, moved and jolted on its own. He'd done it! He had unlocked the secret to life itself. Right. Except something was clearly wrong. The movements were erratic. They were violent, angry. Baby didn't act this way. She had been calm, collected. This was clearly something else. Something mindless and frantic. Perhaps by mixing the souls and then portioning them out, he had created incomplete beasts. He would need to keep testing to truly understand it. He needed more of this remnant. As he searched the old pizza Rhea one more time for any remaining scraps of metal, the ghosts attacked. His past uh, victims come to collect their due, all led by Cassidy. The five clever. lined up and blocked the yeah. door, and Afton's mind reeled. The scientific implications of this were incredible. Ghosts, real ghosts that he could see all standing against him. But mm -hmm. what could they do? What couldn't they do? He panicked as Cassidy approached. How do you stop something that's already dead? Maybe with the <laughs> thing that resulted in their death in the first place. He would get into his suit like old times. He would regain his power over them just like the day that they died. He was the genius. However, he was the one in the suit. He was the one in charge. 
The nice. spring lock snapped into place. Maybe it was the editing is movement. perfect on Maybe this. it was the leaky abandoned restaurant. Maybe it was just fate coming to collect its due. He didn't know. The only thing he did know was that his brain was suddenly filled with searing white hot pain as hundreds of metallic pins and gears stabbed into his body from all sides. Mm -hmm. All he could do was collapse, blood slowly oozing out of the suit and <laughs> out of the floor around him. It couldn't end like this. It wouldn't end like this. His work was unfinished. Unable to move, his only option was to survive. To live to keep living yeah Took days lying in his own blood but eventually someone found him a security guard making a normal report when he saw the animatronics torn apart in the middle of the party room floor it caused him to file an immediate report of a break-in an owner would have to come in and claim the damage and who else would it be other than henry, henry. hope jumped in afton's heart henry would see him they were partners after all he would be the one to help save him to get him out of this suit to relieve him from this tremendous pain henry entered the secret room his eyes fell on afton sitting there in the pool of red and Henry, saying nothing, turned and walked away. This is just to inform all employees that due to budget restrictions, the previously mentioned safe rooms are being sealed and <laughs> oh. oh. taken out beforehand, so if you left anything inside, then it's your own fault. Oh. Anyways, also request that this room not be mentioned to family, friends, or insurance representatives. I so see. there Afton would sit, hanging on for thirty years, trapped behind the walls 30. with an iron will. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, I would I would actually change it a little bit. I would say he did all of that in 1995 rather than 93 because that's what it is in the novels and he's already used novels date uh, uh, novel dates before. So I would probably bring in 1995 into that equation because it also could tie into security breach but we don't know for sure. Um but I do like I I, re I like like I said last time I like the story that he's bringing to this because a lot of a lot of the time I do see theories and timelines that are being created by people who just don't think about how all of this is written as a story because there clearly is story here there's clearly motivations in each of the characters to do what they're doing and there's clearly like irony and parallels everything so the fact that he is bringing a story into this properly like he's probably trying to um not not just use evidence and say oh this is that because this is that but at, like asking why and telling a proper flow of time you know uh also i have low battery <laughs> anyway uh yeah i like that I, I i like that a lot um i think he's doing well so far i think there's a few points that i i talked about before that i'm not so sure on but um uh, he's doing pretty well, I think. Uh, it's it's not gonna like tarnish his reputation. <laughs> it's there's gonna be points that people are going to dislike online, as always. Like everybody usually like looks for things to to not like about the things and points them out on Twitter or whatever. But um, but I, I I think he's doing well overall. He's doing really well given like the circumstances and given like the over over what's it called over saturation of the theorist community these days so yeah he's doing well that refused to die end of this part i say this part because it's not officially the end of the afton era just yet but this just felt like a really solid stopping point the episode has gone on forever okay so right. most of this is things that we already knew stuff that's been established and re-established time and yeah. time again by the games that said there are two things that i absolutely have to address the first and biggest is the placement of sister location yeah or more specifically, okay thank god elizabeth's death to me evidence yeah. in game seems to suggest that it was meant to come before the crying child death in 1983. No, the absolutely not. this is that the crying child Mangle saw room? something. Remember what oh, here we go. is the phrase that's repeated Let's go. over and okay. over again by psychic friend Fred Bear, yeah. aka William Afton speaking through a walkie-talkie in the Fred Bear plushie's stomach. But okay. what did he see? Well, I think we can tell based on how the nightmare animatronics are visualized. They have mouths Elizabeth. in their stomachs, right. just like baby ripping in half at the waist okay. to swallow a kid. There's also the However, empty girl's room, one presumably left behind by a dead sister. And lastly, it explains why he's scared, and more specifically, why Afton wants. But it him can't scared. be beforehand because Freddy has already from shot. The animatronics. He doesn't want them getting too close because the last time one of his kids got too close to a robot, his daughter died. That's yeah. then why he sets up the nightmares to scare both Mike and the crying child away from the animatronics from that point forward. That's why books like the character encyclopedia outright suggest that yeah, we play as the crying child, child in FNAF 4. That's why he has a nanny cam.
Sam following the crying child everywhere so he can keep yep. tabs on his kids when they're out of his sight. He can't let another Elizabeth situation happen. So the what death changed of Elizabeth your mind? also gives William Afton extra motivation for killing. He's a grieving father. His daughter was taken away from him, so Charlie should die as well. He's lashing out at the world after losing his kids. And again, we know that at least one of his children had to have died prior to Charlie's death, based oh, on yeah. the amount of dirt that we see in Midnight Motorist. It also allows circus I babies mean... to open and close earlier in the timeline, which is how you wind up with Funtime Foxy appearing as Mangle in the FNAF 2 location. They're not Basically, the same. Elizabeth dying first has everything it needs to fit, except for the most important thing, the murder weapon. Why yeah. would Afton be building an animatronic with a giant claw on its stomach so early in the timeline? Well this done, point, Matt Pat. It just has well no done. motive. It just doesn't make sense prior to it 1983. Can't be before 1983. At this point in the story, he hasn't killed anyone. And we know for a fact that the missing children's incident is 1985. So Elizabeth's yep. death coming before any of those events just doesn't work. Hence why I placed it where I did in the narrative timeline. Okay. Afton's death here is also a bit tricky. We know that he returned to the FNAF 1 location to break down the original animatronics in order to harvest their remnant. We know that he melts down five things to become five into one, one thing. Candy Cadet makes MCI. that very clear. So the five things are the five endoskeletons from the various animatronics. I like that. That would be totally like fine if it weren't for one huge problem. On his fifth visit to the pizzeria, Afton gets spring locked. So either the five becoming one starts in 1993, but then finishes 30 years later when he re-emerges from the wall to add the last endoskeleton to his pile, or he's had himself some reason to return to the original location after harvesting all the stuff that he can. It's not ideal, but it's the one angle that makes the most sense. And with that, this next chapter mm. comes to a close, thereby leaving us with five more games to cover and another 40 plus years of Fazbear history to read. <laughs> mm, Ooh, 40. It that way, something tells me that this might balloon into four parts. Ugh, we'll see. Anyway, until then, my Faz heads, congratulations, you've made it through a massive upload. And hey, if you are still looking for more to watch, then check out the- Okay. Good one, Matt Pat. Good one. Um, he's made some 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 good points. As he said, a lot of it is quite bog standard, like hardcore. What we already know previously, uh, kind of reiterating uh, a lot of the stuff that we've already been through in a lot of the game theory videos. Um, but that is interesting sister location placement. I don't know if I would place it there. I don't know. It, it is very good because, again, I keep saying this, but he is putting a story to these games. And I really like the way he's doing that because it really does show how people have motivation for things and things like that. And he does make a good point. It can't be before 1983 at all. <sighs> Sister Location is a hard one. I think FNAF 4 and Sister Location are probably the, the two hardest to put in the timeline because it's just it's very difficult to know. Like, right? Like, I, like, there's no dates associated with them at all. Well, the other games all pretty much have uh, pretty standard, like, dates or times or whatever. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, that was part two. We're going to be moving on to part three next week. I don't know if it'll be next week, but hopefully, hopefully it's next week. Uh, so subscribe, stay uh, updated with this channel. Uh, yeah, and I'll see you then. Goodbye. <laughs>